unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all God's people, for unity among all within the church Christ came to build, and especially in this village of Hawkehurst and Diocese of Canterbury. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise, and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, 
For God doth know that the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with thee, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Thanks be to God. to a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. 
And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing as I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. 
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
shepherds go to the manger, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom, favor, whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. service from St. Lawrence Church, Hawkehurst, in the Diocese of Canterbury. I am Father Rodney Dre, a vicar of this beautiful parish in the Weald of Kent. I would like to take this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you as we prepare to celebrate Christmas this year. Sometimes things happen that change the course of our lives. A serious illness or a near-fatal accident the birth of a first child, the death of a loved one, and yes, the testing destructiveness at every level of our common life this past year of the COVID-19 pandemic. These and other major events stop us in our tracks and lead us to reassess our lives. Christmas is just such an event. Though the birth of Christ took place over 2,000 years ago, its true meaning can indeed make us sit up and take notice if we let it. The words from Holy Scripture about this life-changing event are clear, comforting and challenging. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For a child has been born for us, his authority shall grow continually. These words of Isaiah were fulfilled in the birth of Christ. And then there are the words of the angels in St. Luke's Gospel. They have the power to stir us in the depth of our being. St. Luke writes, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. I would like to humbly suggest to you that the birth of Jesus is a life-shaping event. Indeed, taken together with the rest of his life and his death and his resurrection, I suggest it is the life-shaping event. Nothing can compare to it 
and to the hope and joy it can engender in the hearts of all people. We need to hold on to the truth that Christmas joy includes everyone. St Luke, in his Gospel account of the birth of Jesus, deliberately joins the census of the whole world to the birth of Christ the Messiah, our Lord and God. He has the angel announce the tidings of great joy to be shared by all the people. My friends, God comes to us still, even in the midst of our physically and socially distanced, economically challenged, hand-washing, mask-wearing, three-tiered present community life. I remember the words of St. John Vianney. God, he said, would have given us something greater if he had something greater than himself. It was no accident that the scripture states that the child's name shall be called Emmanuel, that is God with us. This is not only a statement, it is also a promise for now and for eternity. God comes to us still. Let us celebrate. Emmanuel is here. God is with and among us. God has taken on our skin. God becomes skin of our skin and flesh of our flesh. God shares with us in our trials, pains, disappointments, joys and fears. That skin, as we know, is finally pierced by nails and the God of creation would share even the taste of death with us. In overcoming death, Jesus assures us that God's word will be the final word. God's love conquers all fear. God has been in love with us from the beginning of time and that is the real mystery we encounter as we celebrate the feast of Christmas. And yes, day by day we encounter Jesus in the words of Holy Scripture, in a simple cup, in a common loaf, a nativity that happens again and again as we continue to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, a nativity that happens again and again in the hearts of all who put their trust in Jesus as their Saviour and their Lord. Jesus Christ is the Promised One at the heart of our longings and he is the light in our darkness. And so may God continue to bless you, your family, and all whom you love and for whom you pray. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, 
For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Thanks be to God. Was the light of men. 
And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Jesus Christ, born in a stable, be with the poor and homeless this Christmas time. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, be with young mothers across the world this Christmas time. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, visited by shepherds, 
Be with all who have to work this Christmas and those who long to work. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, who became a refugee, be with those who fear for their lives and those who have left homes and families this Christmas. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Amen. with you and remain with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. 